All right, how's it going, guys? Wanted to make a video today to do a review on this uh, beastly Teleview Panoptic 41 millimeter hand grenade eyepiece that I got about a month ago. Um, I've done about 10 nights with this, with uh, new moons, had some great views of Nebula, of the Andromeda Galaxy, all through my Celestron C8 SET, and all here in the beautiful Arizona, which in my current backyard is Bordel 7. Uh, in this case, I was actually having about 20 to 30 percent humidity, so it's not the dry conditions that we're used to seeing in Arizona. Even still, the views of this have been phenomenal, which I'll get into in this video. But first, before I talk about the performance, just figured I'd give you guys a comparison. <laughs> the size of this eyepiece compared to a soda can. I have this screwed up a little bit, so it's a little bit taller, but in general, the eyepiece is taller than a soda can. It's wider than a soda can. And it's certainly heavier than a soda can. We're talking about an eyepiece that weighs 2.1 pounds. So um, it's just, it's beastly, but I love it. I actually like that aspect of it. Now, first things first, if you're looking into eyepieces, weight could be a factor. I would say though, weight is much more of a factor on Dobsonian scopes than it is SCTs, especially on an equatorial mount, because I can easily balance out the weight. If you're using a long, long Dobsonian, which has a very long tube, if you have too much weight at the front, you have to counteract the weight in the back. And sometimes the weight in the front can actually cause cheaper telescopes to bend, put them out of collimation, and I guess in some cases even break. I haven't seen that, but I've heard of it. So and that's something to worry about if you're using a Dobsonian, but again, the weight SCT, equatorial mount, not a problem whatsoever. Now, the reason I bought this eyepiece is SCTs naturally have a lot of field curvature, which means if you're looking into a field, the edges might look a little blurry and out of focus. And that's how they were on my previous two inch eyepiece, which is my Botter Planetarium, a 36 millimeter Hyperion. So this eyepiece is actually designed for longer focal length scopes. So you do not get that level of field curvature that you're gonna have with other eyepieces. Even the Pentax 40 I have heard has a little bit of field curvature. This one seems flat all the way across, which just gives you that kind of typical, uh, much sought after spacewalk view through a spaceship window when you're looking out of this. It's just phenomenal. I mean, just, just it's just, there's just nothing else like it. When you put that right up to your eye, it really does make it hard to go back to an eyepiece that's smaller. I would say this spends about 70 to 80% of the time in my scope. And I know I have had one comment say, you know, why would you spend so much money, $480 on a single eyepiece? And the answer to that is one, this is more than just an eyepiece. This is not an eyepiece that I just kind of take out and swap with other eyepieces throughout the evening. When I put this in my scope, on a new moon, dark night, when I'm looking at nebula and star fields and galaxies, this thing stays in my scope pretty much the entire night. It gives me about a 50 magnification with my uh, CASCT. And if you want to do a field of view comparison, I recommend you go to astronomy.tools and look up the comparison to see the field of view you want and if it matches up with you know what you're looking to get out of a telescope. This thing is roughly equivalent to... I want to say like a 10 inch Dobsonian with an inch and a quarter eyepiece or maybe like an eight inch Dobsonian with an inch and a quarter eyepiece is, is what you're getting with an SCT. So the myth that SCTs only provide a narrow field of view experience is busted. Not true at all. You get great field of view with this eyepiece. Again, you know, jet black stars all the way around. Uh, sorry, not jet black stars. <laughs> pinpoint stars all the way around jet black background. And then one more benefit I wanted to add about using one eyepiece is I only have to focus this once. I put this on my scope, I put this bat knob mask on it, I focus it, and I'm pretty good for the rest of the night, to be honest. That, that, that's pretty nice, you know, have it prime focus, which is uh, always, uh, in my opinion, important. You know, you're gonna be spending hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands on an eyepiece. Uh, you wanna spend a few more dollars to get it in focus and uh, not having to constantly look at a very bright star to be able to use this and refocus it with different eyepieces is definitely, uh, you know, very nice. Now, the other main reason I bought this eyepiece was I wanted to maximize my use of filters. So I have an O3 filter here from Astronomic. This is for you looking at planetary nebula. And what these filters do is block out every little bit of light that is not the light you want to see. So I've seen nebula with this that I've never seen just by using the eyepiece by itself from my Bortle 7 backyard. And then I also have here a UHC filter, ultra high contrast, which is more of a, a well-rounded nebula filter. And then I want to say I plan on getting an H beta filter, I think is what it's called. It could be H alpha. I'm pretty sure it's H beta to see those bigger 
uh, nebula in the sky, like uh, I want to say North American nebula, but I could be wrong. So if you want to use filter, what you need is a bigger exit pupil. Now the formula for a bigger exit pupil is the focal length of the eyepiece divided by the focal ratio of the scope. In this case, it's 41 millimeters divided by 10 gives me a little over four, which is what you want. I'd say minimum three, but you definitely want four. And in some cases, I've heard people even say five. So uh, this, these kind of, these two, augment each other and I've seen nebula in this scope that I never even imagined you could see with these filters. So I'll probably do a video review on these on their own, but you know, just again, you wanna use filters, you wanna have a bigger exit people, you wanna get an eyepiece like this, it's in that 40 millimeter range for an SET. Again, made for the longer focal length scopes. Uh, eye relief is about 27 millimeters on this. You can actually screw up this top and screw up the secondary ring in the bottom to increase it if you want. I found that Having this screwed all the way down the bottom, if I can get it to do that, it's hard to do with one hand. With the eye cup flipped up, for me as a person without glasses, is perfect. My dad uses glasses. He prefers to use this flip down also at the lowest setting. The eye relief thing is really personal preference. Some people like very, very, very long eye relief. I like around 20 millimeters, but um, you know, it, it's just a personal preference. So for me, uh, having this screwed all the way down, you just get a good view and your eye doesn't get too close to the front of the lens to where your eyelashes are leaving greasy and you know stuff on the front of the uh, of the uh, eyepiece. So um, I have heard a lot of people, or uh, not a lot of people, I would say a couple commenters on the Reddit group tell me that using an eyepiece in a C8 like that is overkill. I'm gonna have a lot of vignetting. And sure, there's a very slight little bit edge of feel that is vignetted, like a little bit fuzzy. Uh, but think about it though, if I got a bigger telescope, that's like a C9 or a C11, the field of view is going to be narrower. So yes, there's going to be less vignetting on the outside, but it's also going to be a narrower field of view. So in this one, I get a slightly la uh, larger field of view, but I have a tiny little bit of vignetting. Again, like very subtle, not even noticeable at all, uh, as opposed to a totally black um, portion where it would be if I was using a bigger scope. So I actually think the trade-off for using a C8 like that for getting the wider field of view is actually worth it because the vignetting really isn't that bad. I mean, I've looked at stars just to test that were at the very edge of the field and I could still see them pretty darn clear. So I would say the, the, the myth that this thing is too much for a C8, that it's overkill, is uh, not factual. So yeah, great with filters, great for viewing, Andromeda Galaxy, Completely bust the myth that the C8 is not good enough for wide field of view. A little bit heavy, but if you're using an equatorial mount, shouldn't be a problem. Um, just clear as day. Just, 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 it's just awesome. I just love this eyepiece. Oh, and one more thing. The great thing about Teleview eyepieces, they hold their value. You, I mean, you might as well be buying a gold bar, right? Especially if they discontinue this line. This is actually going to be more expensive than when I bought it, which is I bought it used from Adorama for about four or sixty four eighty. So, if you want used eyepieces, um, there's Stellar Vision Astronomy in Tucson that sells them. You can get them from Mile High Astronomy. You can get them from Adorama. There's a lot of places to get used used eyepieces. Uh, CloudyNights.com. That's what I recommend. Save yourself a little bit of money, and um, I definitely think while this is a little bit expensive, in the end, the experience just outweighs the negative costs, and it's going to be well worth it. I love this thing. Thanks, guys. Sorry for the long video.